Now we go for the snapshot at t equals 0 plus, right after we move the switch. After we move the switch, the source is no more part of the circuit. But in this snapshot, we represent the capacitor as a voltage source with the value of Vc0 that we computed before, 8 volts. And we represent the inductor as a current source with the value IL0, 2 amps. In this circuit, we will compute the current in the capacitor and the voltage in the inductor, but please remember that the directions for those voltages and currents have been pre-assigned to us once we chose the polarities for voltages and capacitors and directions for currents in inductors. So, this is the current in the capacitor with its polarity IC0 and this is the voltage in the inductor with its polarity VL0. To solve this circuit we use MNA. Reference node, node 1, node 2. Branch currents, going in 1, leaving 1, leaving 1, leaving 2. One evil equation, this one, because we need the evil current, the current in that V branch. Two KCL equations, one for node 1 and one for node 2. Observe the evil current IC0, how it appears in both equations. We solve that system and obtain V1, V2, and IC0. By the way, V2 in this case is VL0, the other value we're solving for. Those are the three equations. We turn them into an array, request a solution for V1, V2, and IC0 with a linear solver, and learn that the current in the capacitor is 0 amps and that the voltage V2 is negative 20 volts. Like this, reference, and this is node 8 volts. It's not unknown anymore. If that is so, the voltage in this 4 ohm resistor is 8 volts divided 4, because this is a reference, so this would have been known as a 2 amp current. Because this current is the current of this current source 2 amps, this is also known. We could have used KCL in this Gauss surface and find that IC0 is 2 amps minus 2 amps, 0 amps. We would have got the same result, this one, much, much faster. What about this voltage? Oh well, we could have written a KVL equation for this loop and say, this voltage is known, this is VL0, the voltage we want to find, and the voltage in this 6 ohm resistor with 2 amps has this polarity and is 12 volts. And we say, from here to there, the voltage is going this way, going down by 12 volts, going down by 8 volts, of course this node is 20 volts lower than this one. The voltage field not is negative 20 volts, which is exactly what we found before. But we would have found them much easier and much faster. Once we have those values, we compute dvc dt at 0 plus as ic0 divided by c. We found that ic0 is 0, so dvc dt at 0 plus is 0 volts per second. And dil dt at 0 plus is vl0 negative 20 divided by l one fourth of a Henry. That is negative 80 amps per second. And we have now some initial conditions. However, the initial conditions we need are for this current in the 4 ohm resistor with this polarity, not for the capacitor and not for the inductor. So we need to solve yet 
another circuit. This is the circuit for t greater than zero. The capacitor will be represented by a voltage source Vc of t, whose value is unspecified, it's a function of time, and the inductor will be represented by a current source with a value I L of t, whose value is also unspecified, it is a function of time. The purpose of this is to write this current, the current we need to find, as a function of Vc and I L. That is the purpose of this. Let's solve this circuit. We observe in the circuit only two nodes, this one and this one. Let me call this one the reference one and this node one. Hmm. There are no controlling equations. There is indeed an evil branch, but in this case I'm not interested in the current through the evil branch, so I can say the voltage here is just negative. Vc, negative Vc of t, whatever that is. So the current I is negative Vc of t divided by 4. That is a quick way of writing that current as a function of Vc and Il, of voltages in capacitors and currents in inductors, in this case only of the voltage in the capacitor as a function of time. That was the purpose. In general, this will be a function of one or more of the voltages in capacitors and one or more of the currents in inductors. Of course, you could have arrived at the same result by writing a KCL equation here, and you would have ended with this result. This is true at any point in time greater than zero. So at t equals zero plus, this is true, which is negative A divided by 4, negative 2 amps. But if, if we find the derivative of this expression with respect to time, we obtain this, which is valid at any point in time. Evaluated at 0 plus, we obtain what we were looking for.